good day to everyone welcome to the coffee break once again if you are a new user of coffee break channel please uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, press the bell icon so that you will be updated updated as soon as a new video is uh, released today we are going to discuss about the treatment options according to the evidence based medi medical practice all over the world against the covid-19 as you know there are so many medications who were considered which were considered as uh, treatment options but uh, there were no evidence against uh, or for their use in the covid-19 uh, pandemic and there are some medications which are uh, already being in use with uh, evidence that they are uh, helpful in the treatment of covid-19 and there are some medications still undergoing research works and uh, uh, finding evidence uh, whether they are successful uh, options of the treatment of covid-19 so uh, let's uh, start from the beginning and see how the covid-19 virus affect the cell and the human body and uh, let's analyze the medications uh, by using each and every step of this process and in which place the medication is uh, supposed to be work uh, working uh, against the covid-19 now we are going to start the discussion about these medications which have been tried so far as a cure for covid-19 and uh, most of the data are dependent on uh, uh, trial results the evidence based results especially uh, recovery trial solidarity trial cold corona trial and some other trials as well so let's start from the beginning the covid-19 virus which comes in contact with the human uh, body and uh, inhaled through the respiratory system and reaches the type 2 alveolar cells of the uh, epithelium of the lung so the first occasion that we can block this process is to block the S proteins of the SARS-CoV-2 virus at this stage the medication working for this stage is convalescent plasma what is convalescent plasma and what does it do well convalescent plasma is extracted from the patients who recovered from covid-19 and 14 days after the recovery they are qualified to donate plasma so their plasma is extracted and the basis of the convalescent plasma treatment is it is a passive immunity immunity what is passive immunity we straight away give antibodies from the recovered precious plasma to block the SARS-CoV-19 S protein epitopes so that they can't get contact into the ACE2 receptors of these uh, uh, type 2 alveolar cells and also they can be more susceptible for phagocytosis by the immune system macrophages and they become more tasty for them to phagocytosis by that way we can uh, the theory is we can block the transmission of the virus to the human cell body and by that we can treat COVID-19 there are so many uh, trials going on and Indians did the research work and they found that convalescent plasma has no benefit but recovery trial is currently undergoing and they are nearly nearly there to complete the trial uh, 
and uh, give the results most probably uh, the prediction is they also have not found any good uh, effect of uh, COVID-19 patients in patients uh, with uh, uh, passive immunity treatment by convalescent plasma but the results are uh, is yet to be published it's not published yet so that is the initial stage so when the COVID-19 virus try to get hold of this ACE2 receptor of the uh, type 2 alveolar cells still we can block it by blocking these ACE2 receptors. If we can block these ACE2 receptors, the COVID-19 virus cannot enter into the uh, type 2 alveolar cell and uh, there are medications working at this, supposed to work at this point and uh, there were a lot of uh, trials regarding those medications. First one was regarded as azithromycin. The other one was hydroxychloroquine. And the other one is ivermectin. Recovery trial found no benefit, no benefit out of uh, these two medications, so they are out now. Azithromycin proved to be no, not beneficial in the treatment of uh, COVID-19 and hydroxychloroquine has no benefit of the treatment of COVID-19. So they are out of practice now. Ivermectin. What is Ivermectin? Ivermectin is a medication which was found in early uh, 70s, 1970s and uh, very well used against the helminthic infestations and also uh, parasitic arthropodic infections and infestations uh, in humans and in uh, veterinary practice as well. And uh, this was initially uh, pay, uh, uh, taken the patent by Merck a medical company and uh, it was a very 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 popular medication so Ivermectin has five actions but out of that one action is supposed to block this ACE2 receptor there are no evidence yet to say that ivermectin is helpful in blocking these receptors and there are no evidence to say no they are not helpful to block this uh, uh, ACE2 receptors and uh, trials are undergoing at the moment. Irrespective of that ivermectin is very well used against COVID-19 in South African countries and uh, Latin American countries in excess in black market even though it is not proven that Ivermectin has benefits by any large trial people used to take over the counter Ivermectin which is a cheaper medication and they claim that they got a lot of uh, benefits a uh, lot of uh, health uh, against COVID-19 by using Ivermectin especially in countries like Peru it is very well used even in South Africa they use ivermectin uh, over the counter as a prophylactic treatment against uh, COVID-19 but we don't have any evidence in fact ivermectin was initially introduced as antiviral treatment for uh, potential antiviral treatment for um, COVID-19 by Australian uh, professor and they mentioned inside the lab it proved that COVID-19 virus can be killed by using ivermectin in 48 hours time but in human body the situation is different some people say that we need an excess amount of ivermectin concentration which is very toxic to human body 
uh, that the level which is needed to kill COVID-19, but still there is no proper evidence. Ivermectin is something which is being evaluating at the moment and uh, these two are out. Convalescent plasma is about to be out of the practice, I think, but still they, they are being used and uh, evidence is awaiting. Apart from that, hydroxychloroquine has another point of action that is, as the medical students and doctors are well aware, when the SARS-CoV-19 virus get contact with this ACE2 receptor, the, uh, the cell membrane try to uh, come over it and make a endosome these two edges come and join together. So hydroxychloroquine is supposed to block this endosome formation uh, as well. So it has two point of actions, but anyway, it is out now and uh, no benefits and uh, not used anymore, not recommended the use anymore in COVID-19. So passive immunity, we discussed uh, convalescent plasma and what is active immunity? Active immunity is the vaccination. Even though we don't use vaccination as a treatment option, uh, the point of action is here. Now what happens? When the SARS-CoV virus is entered into the cell, the next stage is replication. There are medications working at this point, supposed to work at this point, and there are uh, there were trials to try some medications. Those were lopinivir and retinovir. These two combination was used as a medication, antiviral medication against uh, HIV virus. And the uh, major point of action is uh, uh, the protease inhibitor. In the process of replication of this uh, SARS-CoV virus inside the type 2 alveolar cell, uh, they have to uh, synthesize polyproteins in the ribosomes and these polyproteins should be uh, arranged to produce all the organelle of this virus inside the cell and then the uh, virion, the uh, small virus is released back to the system as a uh, replicated uh, uh, new virus. Among this process uh, lopinivir and retinivir were supposed to block this protease enzyme which inhibits this, uh, uh, poly, uh, this uh, polyprotein formation and uh, uh, formation of the organelle. And uh, there is another medication which works at this point that is remidesivir. Remidesivir is a medication which was used against the Ebola virus. So this was tried and uh, there were uh, a lot of uh, trials going on against and for Remidesivir uh, use. And Remidesivir is supposed to work at the point of uh, uh, RNA dependent RNA uh, uh, polymerase uh, reaction. So the nucleic material of the virus is uh, polymerized and uh, uh, produced in excess to form more virions and remdesivir was to inhibit that. Even in the UK we used at a point remdesivir as a potential uh, 
uh, treatment for uh, COVID-19. But uh, now the uh, trial evidence says that there is no benefit. Recovery trial found that there is no benefit uh, from the usage of uh, lopinivir and retinavir in the treatment of uh, um, COVID-19 uh, infection. And remdesivir and interferon beta, these two are supposed to block the replication, viral replication, and uh, solidarity trial proved that there is no benefit. So these three medications are also out now and not recommended anymore against the treatment of SARS-CoV-19 virus. Now, we considered the medications up to the level of replication of the virus inside the cell and now the virus comes into the system again after being replicated inside the human cell and what happens next when the virus comes in excess a lot of viruses come into the system and uh, interleukin 12 pathway interleukin 4 pathway anti-inflammatory pathway pro-inflammatory pathway so if interleukin 12 pathway is triggered it stimulates the macrophages and the macrophages releases interleukin 6 interleukin 1 interleukin 8 tnf alpha and chemokines so what happens the cytokine storm happens here cytokine storm. Cytokine storm leads to acute respiratory distress syndrome, heart failure, kidney failure, liver failure. In simple words, multi system failure. So, there are medications acting upon this point, acting upon the cytokine storm. They are out now. What are those medications? Dexamethasone. Dexamethasone to sit in human to see Lisu map Colchisi What is Dexamethasone? Yes. All of you are fully aware that dexamethasone is a steroid. Recovery trial, recovery trial proved that one third of deaths, one third of deaths of the hospital admissions of COVID-19 patients could be stopped by the use of dexamethasone. 
We have evidence. Recovery trial gives us evidence and dexamethasone is a valid treatment option for COVID-19. And it acts upon the cytokine storm and thereby stop the process of inflammation. And uh, the special uh, thing in dexamethasone is, dexamethasone is effective only in the patients who are respiratory uh, system uh, uh, compromised patients. So, in other words, if somebody needs oxygen due to COVID-19 infection, dexamethasone has a role and it prevents death by one third. So, it did a remarkable uh, service and uh, wow, this wonderful service in the treatment of uh, COVID-19 patients and death reduction. What is tusilinumab? Tusilinumab is a monoclonal antibody. Tusilinumab is a monoclonal antibody. I explained to you in the previous uh, video that the leader of this cytokine storm is interleukin-6. So, tusilinumab acts upon interleukin-6 and it inhibits interleukin-6 and thereby it inhibits this process and multi-system failure. We have evidence. Tusilinumab, we have evidence in our recovery trial that Tusilinumab helps in the treatment of COVID-19 infection by inhibiting interleukin-6. Colchicine. What is colchicine? Colchicine is extracted from a plant and it is used against gout uh, and uh, It is an anti-inflammatory medication uh, which is uh, used for a long time against gout, gout and pericarditis. Colchicine is under experimental level and uh, there was a trial called Colcorona trial. whole corona trial and they proved that colchicine prevents 22 percent of hospital admission after being given in 0 0.5 milligram bd for three days and 0 0.5 milligram daily for 28 days course of treatment and it reduced hospital admission admission by 22 percent this uh, trial was done by the Montreal Heart Institute but there are other trials going on at the moment and uh, we don't have enough evidence to say colchicine works but we don't have enough evidence to say colchicine has no role. So we are waiting for the results of other trials. Now you can see that we have only a limited amount of medications which are proved to be effective with evidence-based which are helpful in uh, COVID-19 infection. Out of them, dexamethasone, we have evidence. Number two, tusilizumab. Yes, we have evidence. Number three, convalescent plasma. No proven evidence, no disproven evidence. We are waiting for the finalization of the trial results. So this is doubtful. Ivermectin. No evidence, not 
nothing to prove no nothing to say yes we are waiting for more evidence and uh, doubtful at the moment colchicin now colchicin still undergoing trials and we don't have enough evidence so doubtful out of the other medications none of them are proven that they are helpful in the treatment of covid-19 apart from these medications there are a hundred of medications which are undergoing trials but these are the major uh, medications in the uh, field and uh, out of them we have only two things which are evidence proven medications against covid-19 they are dexamethasone and tocilizumab only two medications others are all doubtful so remember uh, apart from the standard care of oxygenation positive airway pressure ventilation and mechanical ventilation and at the worst scenario ecmo treatments these are the only two medications with evidence that we can use against covid-19 infection but there are two other elements that is vitamin d and zinc vitamin d and zinc they have various activities against antiviral and anti inflammatory and uh, uh, zinc trials are going on at the moment so adequate levels of zinc adequate levels of vitamin are given a correlation with good effects good outcome of covid-19 i hope that you gain a bit of a idea as to the medical treatment options for covid-19 uh, with evidence based medicine all over the world but please remember up to date we couldn't find any sort of antiviral medication which can kill the covid virus straight away and uh, give us give a permanent cure or give a 100% cure uh, as an antiviral against covid-19 uh, things are under uh, under experimental levels and there are some successful stories as you can understand uh, but please remember one thing vaccination and the good medical practice good uh, health care uh, for an example uh, our good habits of washing hands and our good habits of keeping distance and our good habit of uh, using masks and our good habit of uh, being quarantined or isolated once we are infected and educating Uh, the society about covid-19 are the major contributory factors against uh, covid-19 that we can uh, use as weapons so still we have to do our good uh, uh, habits uh, of uh, good uh, hygiene care to uh, prevent covid-19 even though there are some treatment options and there are vaccines against covid-19 Mm, we have to be very careful about uh, ending this pandemic thank you so much for listening to my the coffee break by dr dharma sena program and uh, once again i will remind you to subscribe for my channel if you are not already subscribed thank you so much see you again with another coffee break program most probably about the variants of covid-19 all over the world and uh, their effect and uh, uh their pros and cons and uh, how they affect the pandemic thank you so much have a good day